Hey, welcome to Flight Test. I'm Josh, and this is Josh. Hi. And today we got a bunch of different kinds of planes out here because why? What are we talking about? Put it in a nutshell. We always talk about flying airplanes, but yeah. we never talk about what makes planes fly. Right. So we thought today we'd talk about. They give you a good overview. Talking about tinfoil. Talking about tinfoil. Yep. No, we're not. What's tinfoil? Why do you even have tinfoil? What the notes say. Tinfoil. Tin. Airfoils. 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 I'm airfoils today. today. Yes, not tinfoil, but you know what? Maybe someday we'll make an airplane out of tinfoil. That's a great that'd idea. That'd be a good challenge. It'd be a wouldn't foil it? airfoil. Yeah, that'd be cool. Foil but squared. As you can see, we've flown lots of different styles, from trainers to aerobatic airplanes. All of them have different airfoils. Mm -hmm. And one reason we want to go talk about that with you guys is so basically, if you ever want to try to duplicate something, build something, reassemble something, that's reassemble broken. something, you guys will have an idea how to do it and what kind of wing you need to build. Right. So, what do you want to talk about first? Let's There's talk a lot about of planes in this yeah. Thing. Let's let's start with uh, maybe one of the uh, more basic ones as far as like the way it's shaped. Probably the simplest one too. Flat. Yes. It's just flat. Flat airfoil. Now, what what does a flat airfoil do in far as far as lift goes? Well, it doesn't do much for lift unless it has incidence. Exactly. Exactly. And incidence is the angle. Angle of attack. Of attack. Exactly. So you see, the wind can get under there. Yep. And produce some lift, but it does cause a lot of drag. Yes, so you get absolutely no lift. You have to use incidence to the relative angle of attack to the relative wind, yeah. but you're not gonna get much speed because the plane's wing is like this, just kind of cupping the air. Yeah, and if you just had it flat like that, it would be like me standing in a stiff breeze. Nothing's really gonna happen because it's just flat. Could have put it better myself. No lift, no drag. Nothing absolutely. Going on. So, but it is easiest to build, and for a lot of the indoor planes, you know, you don't want speed, so go with the flat. Okay. Absolutely. Probably the next step up would be under camber, huh? Under camber. Under right. camber, right here. Which we have in the Fokker here, exactly. times three. Exactly. Now, what, what this is gonna do is with the under camber, you, you got a lot more uh, lift, probably a, a tremendous amount of lift at the lowest air speeds, but from the way the wing's designed, you have the, also the most drag because the, the wing's kind of cupping down. Yeah, and all it, your wind gets caught in here, huh? Yeah, that is good for slow flying airplanes, trainers. Uh -huh. uh, in the real world, you see them on ultralights. Uh, some of the old World War I airplanes, just like we have right here. Mm -hmm. uh, but all in all, as far as for uh, flying a model, Still not the most efficient. You okay. still have to have angle of attack okay. uh, dialed in with this guy. All right. All right. So next, next would be probably our little Cessna over here. Okay, and this has uh, somewhat of a flat bottom. Flat bottom. Exactly. Flat bottom. Talk uh, about airfoils. Flight test got him. Can you make that up in your head? No, it's a spinal tap reference, but you probably. I wouldn't know, you know that. anything about that. No, I do not. But flat bottom is very common, and this is actually not the truest flat bottom. Uh, a Clark Y, uh, something that you see on a Piper Cub, would probably be the most typical flat bottom okay. airfoil you'd see. But, but we had to work with what we had laying around. Exactly. We but don't flat, have very many planes here. No, no. Well, most of them have been crashed. So. Yeah. Yeah. What's but, next? What's next? Well, probably aerobatic. Okay. Right? We've grown symmetrical with these guys. Symmetrical. Now, now, this is what's left of this airplane, but it's really, really great because we can show you. Chad painted that red there, what a symmetrical is like. Now, the nice thing about this is it actually generates lift upside down or right side up, hence oh, why wow. it's great for aerobatic airplanes. Okay. But what you do uh, lose is the nice uh, docile tendencies you get from a flat bottom airfoil under camber airfoil. Gotcha. Um, this is not nearly as stable, um, but it is nice and it also behaves the same no matter which attitude it's in. Right. So um, with a uh, under cambered airfoil or a flat bottom, the more speed you have, oftentimes the more lift you generate. So say you go full throttle, you'll see these guys climbing on you. Where this one, you go full throttle, it's just gonna track straight as an arrow right through the air. Okay. So it's a very good airfoil to have if you're gonna look to, to fly like an aerobatic airplane gotcha. or something fast. All right, we have one more to talk about, the KF airfoil. KF airfoil. Now, now let's put a scenario here. We have a Cessna and somehow the wings get blown off the Cessna. Accident. We don't know how it happens, it just happens. But we gotta get our Cessna back up in the air. Yeah. How do we do it? We don't uh, wanna take the time to cut you know, balsa wood ribs out and to, uh, to cover and, and to go the long way. We wanna get this thing back up in the air quick. Right. Maybe with foam. Okay. Sound good? Sounds easy. Well, with foam, we can make an airfoil too. And this is the uh, KF airfoil, which is designed by Klein Fogelman. Did I say his name right? I was gonna ask you. Viewers, you can tell us so I said the name right. Klein Fogelman, and this is a stepped airfoil. Now, it looks like it's a really, really goofy design. It looks like it'd have a lot of drawbacks, but what uh, Mr. Fogelman's idea was, was actually to create an airfoil, and as the air comes over the top here, there's actual turbulation, turbulence, air pockets, we'll call them, right. that, that form in each one of these steps. 
Thus, when the air molecules go over the wing, it actually is buffered by this reducing parasitic drag and causing an actual smooth flow of air. Right, so the little air pockets have less parasite drag than like the front of this. The parasites goes. aren't on this one as No, much. the parasites get blown right off. We just got them right, they right, got right, right. They got drag, bro. Yeah, yeah. They, they got a shot, you know, some flea and tick remover. That's pretty deep. That is deep. Guys, don't be intimidated. If you want to go out and try to scratch build design your own airplane, depending on how you want to fly, pick one of these airfoils and go with it. It's a real flexible thing. If it's not going to work, it's going to crash and you can just build a new one. Yeah, just do it again. Absolutely. Try, try again. What do you say we go ahead and put yeah, this wing put on this real on. quick? Okay. Now, something I noticed different about these wings is that there's no dihedral to them like there is to the original Cessna, yeah. Cessna yeah. wings. So why, so why isn't it? Because mm -hmm. we're lazy. Uh, um, it's a lot easier to build a flat wing than a wing with dihedral. I see. What we're giving up is a little bit of the uh, stability. Right. Uh, when dihedral wings bank, they like to kind of try to self-correct a little bit, yeah. depending on how much dihedral you have. So we're giving up a little bit of that, but we do gain some strength. There's still no struts on the Cessna. Right. And uh, Chad actually built this wing, and uh, he has a uh, Fiberglass two or fiberglass rod inside, okay. and also uh, carbon fiber uh, sticks in the back. If you see right here, yeah. So uh, that's what gives it its strength. Uh, anytime you have a break in the wing, you do have to have special uh, ways of uh, making it stronger. And when you have a really thin air cord, it's just uh -huh. really hard to make it strong. I see. So uh, yeah, we but went the flat. control surfaces are a little bit bigger too, aren't they? Yeah, they are a little so bit bigger. So that'll help with your stability. Exactly. We we don't okay. really care about stability as much as, as control in windier weather, All right. uh, which we tend to have in a while. Yes, so, we do. Yeah, we'll see how this goes. Okay. You want to do it? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Well, <laughs> lift definitely isn't an issue. Yeah. About three inches. And ailerons are very effective. As in the other one, as we talked about before, the ailerons were not uh, very effective at all. And uh, this fly is amazing. Obviously, I like every airplane, but if you look here, the plane handles the wind real nicely. It's not flying at a nose high attitude. And even through all, all uh, wind uh, air speeds, it's still flying real nice. So thanks KF for the design. Yeah, very efficient design. Uh, we're generating lift with a really, really weird looking airfoil and that's a cool thing. So let's see what it does and uh, we'll get in the wind and see how it rolls. It rolls really nice. Really fast too. Now the original Cessna we reviewed didn't have a very good roll rate. It was designed very scale, and the ailerons were very, very tiny. It was very anemic. Uh, this is not anemic at all, and it flies beautifully. Let's go ahead and do a stall real quick and see if it has any tip stall uh, tendencies here. Okay. Not bad at all. I'm very, very pleased with that. Nice uh, wing. Yeah. Hey, Chad, how long did it take you to build this? Uh, three hours. Took so, so about hours. three hours of, uh, for Chad to build this, and uh, it would take a lot longer to build a uh, an actual balsa wood airplane. So it works. And it flies good upside down too. So you, if you had a mishap with your Cessna, like yeah. we did with ours, yeah, three hours and you're back up in the three air. Three hours and you're good to go. It's a very, very nice flying airplane. I like it a lot. Well, let's see if we can get it down in one piece. What do you say? Sure. All right, try. so folded uh, Klein Fulgerman modified airfoil. KF. Is KF. Kentucky Fried airfoil. Yeah, it's a winner in my book. Okay. Bring it in, nice and easy. There we go. Nice. No wheel pants stands either. Ah, uh, we took them off. All right, guys. Took off the pants, so well. Hope if you learned anything out of this is don't be intimidated by different airfoils. Just know what you want to do with an airplane. Pick the airfoil that corresponds with that flight characteristic right. and build and have fun. Sure. So. so we hope this was informative for you. We want to thank you guys for watching. Thanks, Hobby King, for sponsoring this episode. Make sure you guys keep subscribing and check out the forum on flighttest.com. Click Absolutely. on the forum tab and uh, talk to us. Yeah, talk Give to us. Your thoughts. We want to talk to you. Yeah. All right. All right. We'll see you later. I want to put that in. Okay. Sure. Okay, cool. Now, it's not an exact replica, as some of you Avatar buffs uh, may note, but one, one major thing that's not the same about it is that this gun right here, there was a bunch of them, like, all going out like this. Okay. But it was directly that. underneath. It was directly underneath the props, and they wouldn't have been able to fly like that. That would, would be aerodynamically irresponsible. Right. Mm.